We are on the last uh, category of our uh, evidences of evolution. That is the fifth category and it can be considered as biochemical, cytological and physiological evidences. So we have combined all these, so various kind of uh, compounds, biochemical substances, certain cytological things and some metabolic uh, examples or evidences. Let us take them one by one. Enzymes like amylase and trypsin. Amylase and trypsin. They are found in organisms from sponges to mammals. So in animals from sponges, that is Orifera phylum to Chordata and the most evolved organisms in Chordates, that is mammals. So they are common, are present. So amylase and trypsin, they're basically called universal enzymes. The reason is very obvious that they are present in the entire animal kingdom, starting from sponges, that is porifera to chordata. The next example is of hormones. So hormones like tyrosine or thyroxine. This is responsible for the metabolic activity in higher organisms like mammals. It also helps in growth. If this thyroxine, which is uh, the, one of the very important hormones in our body, if thyroxine, if it is injected in a tadpole, that, then it stimulates metamorphosis. In tadpoles, then this would stimulate or trigger metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is again the activities that the new cells are synthesized. And in case of frog, we know it is retrogressive metamorphosis. The tail is absorbed and other new structures are formed. That means the hormone which is working in higher organisms or in mammals is doing the same thing in lower organisms or lower vertebrates we can say in case of amphibians. The next is cytochrome C which is also found in most of the organisms and it helps in electron transport chain. Next category is of blood and lymph. Blood and lymph in all vertebrates have same function. In all vertebrates have same function. That means again when we are talking of different organisms in different groups, they are performing the similar kind of functions that is certain tissues, biochemical substances, let us talk of, uh, say, blood proteins now. Blood proteins, which is known as the hematin crystals. Hematin crystals. Now, when we are talking of hematin crystals or blood proteins, it has been found that humans, that is man, is closest to chimpanzees and gorillas. So when we compare these proteins, it has been found that our proteins are closest to chimpanzees and gorillas. Then the blood proteins, that, that is these proteins are similar in cows, goats, sheep, 
and similar kind of organisms. So again, when we are comparing it, these blood proteins are similar in similar type of organisms. They are also similar, similar in cats and dogs. Cats and dogs both are carnivores, though there are different families now, but probably they have evolved from the same type of ancestors and that is where they are still sharing the same blood proteins. Then let us take the next category that is blood groups. We know of AB, AB blood group that is it is called AB blood group. This AB blood group is found in humans and apes but it is not seen in case of monkeys. So not in monkeys but apes and humans they have it. So when we study human evolution we also understand that we have deviated from the same ancestors. So one ancestor branch has given rise to apes and the other one has given rise to the human beings. Then next example or ex uh, under this biochemical cytological can be of excretory substances. Excretory substances like tadpoles and fishes tadpoles and fishes. They are a monotelic. But the adult frogs, they are ureotelic. So this again helps us understand many things. This is under the category of biochemical or physiological things. But this example that is tadpole and fishes excreting the same kind of way that is ammonia can again be an example of convergent evolution. Belonging to different groups, one is aquatic, the other is amphibian. But because they are in the same kind of habitat, they are showing similar kind of characters. Then there are similarities, the eighth point, there are similarities in organelle, protoplasm in almost all cells. So whether you're talking of a primitive type of eukaryotic cell and the most evolved type of eukaryotic cell in all cells we can say. The organelle which are present like a mitochondria in the very simple yeast cell or the mitochondria in higher organisms they show similar structure, they are performing the same kind of functions and protoplasmic content is same. So all these evidences help us understand that all these complex organisms or most evolved organisms which are existing today, they have similarities with the very old or not so evolved organisms. Like in case of this, the sponges also have the same enzymes as we do have. So this also or these kind of evidences also help us study evolution. So now we have discussed all the evidences which support evolution and by studying these evidences we get an idea that the present day organisms have evolved from some other organisms by undergoing gradual changes.